Welcome, traveler, to my magical forest. Uh, there is a mystical contest about to start taking place, and the savviest of us magical mortals have placed a cheeky little bet on the contest to come. But those creatures who fail to succeed, they may find themselves forever lost. Ah, the magical light! It blinds my eyes! Please turn off the hallway light! Oh, a message from the spirit realm. Ah, oh, his reads. That frog you like is dead. This is Equinox, kindly provided by Plan B Games and designed by none other than the big Niz himself. Getting busy with the Nizzy in a magical forest. And in this game, there are going to be some creatures taking part in a tournament. And you're not going to be playing as these creatures, but you are going to be placing bets in the hope that you're going to be backing the winning creation. However, if you place bids too heavily on the creature that you want to win, then maybe other people are going to horribly scupper your plans. As players, you'll each have a hand of cards that you're going to be using to either bolster or break the fortunes of these creatures, playing a card to the current row, either in a space that doesn't currently have a card or atop a card that's already been played, nullifying the number beneath it like the cheekiest of monkeys. And when every creature still currently in the contest has a card in front of it in the row, you immediately check to see if any of these numbers is uniquely lower than the rest. In this instance, the owl with zero is definitely the lowest, which means that creature is now out of the contest and we move on to the next round of the tournament. And after five rounds, when only three creatures remain in play, the game ends and we determine a winner based on the points scored by players who place bets during the game in addition to playing cards. And when it comes to placing bets, you're gonna be using these delightfully weighted plastic tokens, but you've only got five of them to last you for the entire of the game. And so you wanna be savvy about when and where you placed your bets on creatures, which you can do before any of your turns when you play a card normally. Thing is though, if you place a bid in the first round of the game, that's worth four points. In the second round, three, then two, then one. In the final round, I think bids are worth zero, which seems real bad. But at the very start of the game, you have got the option to place a secret bet based on a card from your hand. And that bid is gonna be worth a whopping five points at the end of the game, providing that creature that you've bid on still exists. Because you see, I might have very slightly buried the lead here. This is a true battle for hearts and minds. And that means that the creature that comes last each round in this contest, well, that beautiful, elegant, gorgeous, delicate creature suddenly no longer actually exists. And that's an unusual format for a sporting event. That horse that you liked, put a little three to one bet on it. Well, I'm afraid that horse no longer exists. I think it's safe to say that, that race went quite badly. And so Equinox, at its core, is a game about pinning your hopes on magical creatures that one by one simply disappear. If nobody remembers the Spaced Out Sex Gnome, then the Spaced Out Sex Gnome simply ceases to exist. Maybe it never existed. Reality has no place for them now, so not only is that gnome now gone, but perhaps that gnome simply never was. So let's just say that me and the other two members of Shut Up and Sit Down, Quinns and Ava, are halfway through a game of Equinox. And a couple of creatures now cease to exist. Any bidding tokens on those creatures' spaces are now effectively worthless, unless, of course, you're able to do something with powers. Now, each of these creatures has a unique power that you can activate, letting you swap cards around on the table, draw more cards, or discard away your chaff from your hand. The Moss Man lets you pick up betting stones you've already placed on the table, while Rubble the Gnome lets you place a bet in a previous row that you've long since passed. There are 14 unique creatures in the box, and each game you'll play with eight of them at random, but with eight things, there's still a lot of capacity for exciting goblin favored jiggery pokery. <laughs> I did the thing you didn't want me to do! <laughs> That's a goblin. But this is also where Equinox starts to creep into the realm of being a little bit fiddly. And 
Let's just rewind a bit and have a look at what it's like opening up this box. This is an inviting, soft, delightful looking thing. This is a box that feels like it should be accommodating to players of any skill level, but it's not quite there. There's just a few too many edge case rules. You can only activate a creature's power if you currently control that creature, and that's based on the total value of all of the bids you've placed on that creature publicly to date, and then when you play a creature card of that type to that column, then you can activate the power. Unless, of course, the values get changed by the fact that somebody may have made their secret bid at the top, and if they reveal that secret bid for any reason, then it's publicly worth five, and that might change control of the column, in which case you're no longer in control and you can't use the power. There's also chameleons. Now, chameleons are wild cards, can be played anywhere, but they do not activate powers. If you control it, but you play a chameleon, it doesn't work. And also, if you play a creature card on top of a chameleon card, then the chameleon before it blocks you from using the power when you place the correct card on top of it. In addition to that, there are also three other special cards within the deck. A duo of unnecessarily sexualized lady trees that let you snap up into your hand any card you'd like from the table, and a criminally under-sexualized old man tree that lets you ask everyone at the table if they placed a secret bid on one creature of your choosing. A very exciting drum roll moment that may reveal some really interesting information, or it might reveal nothing. And all of these things compound, effectively, to create a game which is quite hard for players who don't play a ton of board games to pass and follow the rules as we go. And that's not necessarily because it's complicated, right? None of the rules in this game are particularly fiddly. It's just that there's lots of different things that can happen, and you have to front load a lot of rules, many of which for most of the players throughout most of the game will simply never be relevant. It isn't a game design like most, where you teach someone a rule and they get to see it happen two or three times and then they pick it up. These things might just happen once or twice throughout the entire game. And if people don't understand when they might happen, how they might happen, and the ramifications of that, then that's that whole game kind of in the bin. But at the same time, this gives you a sense of the style of game this is. These creature powers aren't a silly back and forth of crackle and pop. They are strategically controlled tools that might only be used once or twice throughout the whole game. And some of them will never be used at all because those creatures are sadly no longer with us. Pour one out for this flaming creature of pure energy. It didn't make it through to the second round. Everything they were and would be is now gone. <coughs> and this gradual cleaning of house with things disappearing does help the game speed along. The first round takes a little while as you go on faster and faster. And also it's possible for the game to end by the deck running out of cards, which is very possible if people are just playing cards over one another in the early rounds, which may end up with four or even five creatures surviving through to the end of the game and then scoring. But it's probably going to be too late for that smug, lanky fungus creature, entirely erased from the annals of history. <coughs> And so listen, I, Matt Lees, the sole and only member of Shut Up and Sit Down, I've been stretching the truth here, but in a nice way, like a mozzarella stick. In the manual, it doesn't say anything about this idea of retroactively making these creatures no longer a part of reality. I, I added that in my brain and I like it and I'm sharing it. But this game still does hinge around the idea of knocking out these creatures so that they no longer exist, which is just such a delightfully excessive concept. It's so over the top that it fuels this experience beautifully. Look at these cute and delightful creatures in the forest. And now they're gone. Uh, they're dead. We killed the frog. We all did. We knew that you cared about the frog. And so uh, we killed it. It's audacious. It's unexpected. It's like stepping through a wardrobe into a magical realm and immediately punching a unicorn. What just happened? And so I found Equinox to be quite an unusual delight. Tonally, it's a little bit strange, which I'm all about. It's quick, it's light, but then beneath the surface there are enough canny choices and interesting strategic moments. It's not the really light and breezy anyone can play a game that I hoped it might be when I first started looking at it. And if you are looking for that, if you want a game that anyone can play and it's about bidding and control, then I can't recommend For Sale strongly enough. 
And meanwhile, the nitty gritty crowd will probably get a lot more out of the estates. A game of bidding for control over in-development properties that has some weird shared DNA with Equinox, even though it's a much more complicated and mathematical game and quite a different game altogether. But no, Equinox is a really lovely middle ground curio, I think. It is fast. It's, it's like quite low energy to play, which is nice. And it's relatively simple. I really love what they're doing with this here. It's a shame that the theme doesn't stretch over more of the rules. It would make it easier to teach, easier to remember the rules. But as it is, there's a nugget of gold at the core of this game, which is just really wonderful and ever so slightly shocking. Creatures just gone forever. Wonderful and slightly shocking is, is for me, that's some magic secret sauce. I love it. And that's it. Honestly, the main complaints I have about this game, and I've got a couple of them, are almost all to do with the production of this game. Now, the production quality of Equinox is fantastic, right? Everything is of a very high quality. But I don't fundamentally agree with some of the direction of this quality. These tokens feel gorgeous to pick up and play with and move around, but you spend very little time in the game actually ever touching them. And every player gets a little bag, a beautiful little bag to keep their stones in. And there's just no purpose for these little bags. And it just feels like a lot of the design here has been laser focused on the experience of opening up the box and going, ooh, rather than how it feels to be playing with these components during the game and how that's going to affect and improve your experience, which is something that like, it's not to a degree that I find it ugly or egregious, but it's just slightly fluffier than my tastes would usually allow. But there's one thing here that I can't forgive, and this is the hill that I die on, right? I'm, just, I'm, I'm fed up with big cards. I do not know why we've ended up with this trend for really big cards in games. I mean, I do know it's because I think that publishers can actually sell the games for more if the cards are bigger because it tricks our monkey brains. But still, listen, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that big cards are bad. And these cards in this game are too bad. Too flipping big. Firstly, it turns what should be a manageable game into something that can't be played on a coffee table. This requires a massive full-size table. It barely fits on this one. And this is like a normal table, I guess. It's not cool. A small handful of these cards, fine. But an entire deck of these things? Honestly, trying to shuffle these with normal, traditional human hands makes me feel like a baby trying to pretend I'm a professional croupier doesn't fly, all right? And in a game where you're gonna be adding together different combinations of things each time you play and shuffling just those cards, it turns the setup into a bumbling chore. Otherwise it would be so quick and so easy. Look, say no to big cards. Big cards, no more. Big cards are done. And I know this isn't interesting. And I know that this is a boring thing, but look, this is my platform. I'm the only person who owns this channel, and if this is how I want to use my platform, then I'm going to sit here and say no to big cards. And it doesn't matter how many of you close this window and walk away and think, I don't want to listen to that. It doesn't matter how many of you forget about me. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs>